This is chapter 7, Chemical Reactions and Quantities, and section 7 is about mole relationships in chemical equations. Chemical reactions obey the law of conservation of mass. Simply put, this law says that matter cannot be created or destroyed during the course of a normal or ordinary chemical reaction, so there's no change in the total mass. That means that the mass of the reactants that goes into the reaction is exactly the same as the mass of the products that come out of the reaction. And in fact, chemistry is even more strict than this. It's not just the total mass that's the same at the beginning and the end, but all of the individual atoms are really the same at the beginning and the end. Okay? The only thing that has changed during the course of the chemical reaction is how they are structured, how they're patterned or configured, or how they're connected together. In other words, bonds may break in the reactants or bonds may form in the products, um, but overall it's the same atoms, the same collection of individual atoms that makes up the reactants as it is that makes up the products. Okay? So chemical reactions are really rearrangements of atoms based on how electrons interact and rearrange themselves. If you think about it, this idea actually explains why you need to balance a chemical reaction. So let's take this example. We have uh, silver plus sulfur forming silver one sulfide. So you can think about it in terms of the balanced chemical equation in the first row where you have two silver plus one sulfur yields one silver sulfide. You can interpret that in terms of individual atoms. So two silver atoms plus one sulfur atom yields one formula unit of silver sulfide or you can scale it up a little bit, multiply everything through by some whole number, right? So take uh, 100 times as much and you have 200 silver atoms plus 100 sulfur atoms yields 100 silver sulfide formula units. Or we can scale it up even more and multiply everything by Avogadro's number. So two times Avogadro's number worth of silver atoms plus one times Avogadro's number worth of sulfur atoms yields one times Avogadro's number of silver sulfide formula units. But each Avogadro's number is really a mole, so we can also see it as two moles of silver plus one mole of sulfur yields one mole of silver sulfide. And we also know that every substance has a specific molar mass. So the molar mass of silver is 107.9 grams. So two times 107.9, plus the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32.07, yields 247.9 grams in total for the reactants. And then if you look at the formula for silver sulfide and you add up the masses within the formula the way that we learned, you also get 247.9 grams. That's not a coincidence, it's because the product, the silver sulfide, is composed of exactly the same atoms that are in the reactants. So the masses have to be the same. Here we can see what that reaction actually looks like in a sense. So we have our uh, starting materials, our reactants on the left-hand side. So you have two moles of silver here, and that has a mass of 215.8 grams, as you can see weighed out on this scale. And we have one mole of sulfur weighed out here, and that has a mass of 32.1 grams. If you take these two components and you react them completely with one another so that they completely form products, then you end up with one mole of silver sulfide, which has a mass of 247.9 grams. So the sum of the individual reactants equals the mass of the product. Let's look at a slightly different example to see the mole factors in a chemical equation. So here we have a reaction between iron and sulfur. So iron plus sulfur yields iron sulfide. Now, iron sulfide has the particular formula it has because of the ions that make it up. This is actually, I should say, iron 3 sulfide. Okay, it has that Roman numeral 3, which indicates that the iron is actually in a plus 3 charge state. So you have two iron atoms, which are really two iron 3 plus ions, and you have three sulfur atoms, which are really three sulfur ions, which are always S2 minus. And so together, these make up one unit of iron 3 sulfide. That's how their charge balances. That's the lowest whole number ratio between these two ions that gives you a neutral compound. So once we know that that's the formula for iron 3 sulfide, then in order to make it from 
the elements, we have to put in enough atoms. Okay, we need two atoms of iron and three atoms of sulfur. So since those materials, those substances, both come in terms of arbitrary amounts of atoms, we can just take two iron atoms and three sulfur atoms and react them together and create one formula unit of iron three sulfide. But again, we can scale this up and it's often much more useful to think about a chemical equation in terms of mole quantities. And so we could read this equation as two moles of iron plus three moles of sulfur yields one mole of iron sulfide. And so again, we see what that looks like. Two moles of iron looks like this, three moles of sulfur looks like this, but when you react them together, you get one mole of iron sulfide. And again, the mass of the iron and the sulfur is gonna be equal to the mass of the product iron three sulfide. So these numbers in the chemical equation, and again, if there's no number there, you assume that it's a one, right? So the default is a one. These numbers really indicate the ratios, the molar ratios, which come from the atomic or molecular ratios. And so they tell you the optimum or the exact molar ratio between the substances in the chemical equation so that nothing is left over. That means exactly two moles of iron reacts with exactly three moles of sulfur and they produce exactly one mole of iron three sulfide. So if we take any two substances from this equation, any pair of substances, we can see these coefficients as a ratio between them. So for instance, if we're looking at iron and sulfur, and we wanna know, given a certain amount of iron, how much sulfur do I need, or vice versa, well, I can come up with two conversion factors. I can say that this equation tells me that I have two moles of iron per three moles of sulfur, or the reciprocal, three moles of sulfur for every two moles of iron, right? Either way, the number in front of iron comes from the coefficient in front of iron, and the number in front of sulfur comes from the coefficient in front of sulfur. So this is directly from the chemical equation. Okay. Or we can look at two other substances. We can look at iron and the product, iron sulfide. So here we have two moles of iron, because this is a two, for every one mole of iron sulfide, because again, we assume that this is a one in front here. Or the reciprocal is one mole of iron sulfide for every two moles of iron. Either way, it comes from the coefficients. Or the last pair that we have would be between sulfur and iron sulfide. And so in this case, we have three moles of sulfur for every one mole of iron sulfide or vice versa. Okay. So the numbers in front tell you the ratio. If I have two moles of iron, I need three moles of sulfur to react it. But I can scale that up. If I have twice as much iron, I'll need twice as much sulfur. In other words, if I have four moles of iron, I'll need six moles of sulfur. If I have six moles of iron, that's three times as much iron as the equation says, so I'll need three times as much sulfur as it says, so I'll need nine moles of sulfur. Okay, so as long as you apply the same factor, the same ratio to every substance, then the chemical ratio according to the equation works out the same. Let's look at another example. Here we see the reaction between hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas to produce NH3, which is a gas called ammonia. So the equation is three hydrogen plus one nitrogen. Remember, if there's no number in front, we assume that it's a one. Three hydrogen plus one nitrogen yields two ammonia. So the questions are, what are the mole to mole factor between hydrogen and nitrogen and the mole to mole factor between ammonia and hydrogen? So take a moment, pause this and see if you can answer this on your own and I'll go through it right now. So the mole to mole factor for hydrogen and nitrogen is directly from the coefficients in front of hydrogen and nitrogen. So the coefficient in front of hydrogen is three and in front of nitrogen it's one. So if we read this equation, we should read it as three moles of hydrogen plus one mole of nitrogen, or better yet, three moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of nitrogen. Okay, so we're looking for the conversion factor that explicitly says that. So A says the opposite actually. A says three moles of nitrogen reacts with one mole of hydrogen. So this can't be the right answer. Okay, it's not three moles of nitrogen according to the equation. And it's also not one mole of hydrogen. So that's all wrong. B has the correct information. 
B says one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen, which is just another way of saying three moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of nitrogen. All right, so B is actually the correct answer. C has the wrong numbers totally. So it says one mole of nitrogen, which is fine, but then it's talking about two moles of hydrogen, which is not the number in front of hydrogen. It's a three in front of hydrogen. So this is incorrect. And so C cannot be the correct answer. For the mole to mole factor between ammonia and hydrogen, we have to look at those numbers. Okay, so for ammonia and hydrogen, we have a two in front of ammonia, and again, a three in front of hydrogen. So the way that we would think about this or say this is that three moles of hydrogen can react with nitrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. Okay, so three moles of hydrogen produces two moles of ammonia. So the one that says that is again B. Okay, three moles of hydrogen produces two moles of ammonia. If you were upside down, that would still be fine, okay? Because it's a, the same relationship is a reciprocal relationship. So the first one, A, says one mole of hydrogen. One is not the number in front of hydrogen, okay? So A cannot be correct. And C is talking about nitrogen, which is not what the question asked for. So, and then that number is also wrong. So C is incorrect, okay? So the answer to both of these is B. Once we know how to obtain these conversion factors, we can actually use them to perform calculations and make predictions. So for instance, if we know how much of a, one reactant we have, we can calculate how much of the other reactant we'll need and how much of the product we'll be able to get. Or if we know how much of the product we're looking to create, we can calculate how much of each reactant we'll need in order to obtain that. Okay, so the interpretation is a little bit different depending on what the question is asking and what you're thinking about the chemical equation. But mathematically, these questions are all the same. They're all relating the amount of one substance in the equation to an amount of another substance in the equation. So this question says, how many moles of Fe2O3, that's iron three oxide, can form from six moles of oxygen? So we have this equation here, and again, it's balanced. We have four iron and four iron, six oxygen and six oxygen. And so we can use the coefficients in this balanced chemical equation to do this calculation. So we know from the equation that three moles of oxygen is able to produce two moles of iron three oxide. Okay, that's the relationship according to the coefficients. It's a three to two ratio of moles. So if we start with six moles of oxygen, how do we figure out how much product we get? Well, again, we start with the what we know, the measurement we have, six moles of oxygen, and we multiply it by a conversion factor where the unit that we want to cancel is moles of oxygen. So that means that moles of oxygen has to go in the denominator. And the thing that we want is to figure out moles of iron oxide, and so moles of iron oxide goes in the numerator. Once we have that, then we just fill in the numbers. The number next to oxygen is the three right here in the chemical equation. The number next to iron oxide is two because that's right here in the chemical equation. So we take the six moles of oxygen that we started with and we multiply it by two thirds and we end up with four moles of iron oxide. Now, if you have whole numbers or uh, numbers that are even multiples or I should say exact multiples of coefficients in the equation, these calculations can actually be even simpler. So if you take a look at this equation, or this question rather, and you see that it's asking, how much product can we make from six moles of oxygen? Well, the chemical equation tells us how much product, right, if iron oxide is the product, it tells us how much product we can make from three moles of oxygen, right? And it says from three moles of oxygen, we can make two moles of iron oxide. But we don't have three moles of oxygen, we have six moles according to the equation, according to the question, excuse me. So if we have twice as much oxygen as the chemical equation says, then we'll be able to produce twice as much iron oxide as the chemical equation says. Chemical equation says we could get two moles, so twice that would be four moles. Okay? So again, if these are in simple ratios or simple multiples of the numbers in the chemical equation, it's very helpful to think in terms of these multiples, right? Doubling one substance or doubling the amount of one substance doubles the amount of the other substances that you need or that, that you make. So it's very helpful if you can think about it this way. 
If not, you should also be able to use the sort of long mathematical way, uh, especially because if your numbers are anything other than these even multiples, it'll be very hard to, to think in those simple terms, and so you have to use the mathematical way. This is a slightly different example using the same chemical reaction and the same balanced chemical equation. So we're still taking iron and reacting with oxygen to produce iron three oxide. But in the previous example, they told us how much oxygen we had, and we wanted to predict how much iron three oxide we could create. It didn't specify anything about the iron though, because it was just assumed that we had enough iron to react with all of the oxygen and produce the amounts of product that we were trying to calculate. In this example, we're not exactly making that assumption anymore. We don't need to know how much product we're creating, but they tell us how much oxygen we have, and they want to know how much iron will be needed in order to fully react with it, okay? such that there's no oxygen or iron left over, but they both react in the correct ratio to produce pure iron oxide. So in this case, we have 12 moles of oxygen. Okay, and again, we can do the same thing. If we start from 12 moles of oxygen, we can multiply that by a conversion factor, which will cancel the moles of oxygen, and it'll leave the unit that we want. And the unit that we want, according to the question, is moles of iron. Okay, so moles of iron will be the unit in the numerator. Okay. Remember, I said when you start talking about moles, and even now when we're talking about weighing things in terms of grams, you should uh, specify what it is that you're measuring. Okay, So moles of oxygen are not the same as moles of iron. So in this conversion factor, the unit on top and bottom are both moles, but they don't cancel because they're moles of different things. Okay, Instead, the moles of oxygen will cancel the moles of oxygen in our initial measurement, the 12 moles of oxygen. Okay. And so what this is going to leave us with is a measurement that tells us moles of iron. Okay. And so the last thing left to do is to just fill in these numbers from the chemical equation and then do our calculation. So the number in front of iron tells us moles of iron, and that's a 4. So we have 4 moles of iron. And the number in front of oxygen tells us this denominator here, so we have 3 moles of oxygen, O2. So if we take our 12 moles of oxygen that we're reacting and we multiply it by 4 thirds, it'll tell us how much iron we need. Okay, So 12 times 4 divided by 3 is 16 moles of iron. Okay, So the answer is C. Again, that's sort of the long formal way to do it. But again, if you think about the ratios in the equation, we can see that 12 moles of oxygen is four times as much oxygen as the equation says. Okay, the equation says you take three moles of oxygen. So we're taking 12 moles, which is four times as much. That means if we need to react it with iron, the equation says we need four moles of iron for three moles of oxygen. But if we have four times as much oxygen, we'll need four times as much iron. And so four times the four moles of iron from the equation is four times four, and that gives us 16, okay? So that's another way that we can verify that the answer here should be C, 16 moles of iron. Here it walks you through step by step, analyze the problem in terms of what you're given and what you need. The thing that you use to connect them is the mole to mole factor. Then the mole to mole factor is used as a conversion factor between moles of oxygen and moles of iron. The coefficients directly from the chemical equation are then used to create the conversion factors. And then the correct conversion factor is chosen based on canceling out the units and leaving the correct unit that you want. Okay, So this is just the same process I did on the first slide, step by step.